you don't think about blinking until you start blinking. Hello everybody, it's Charlie and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Yes, I am wearing the same top as in the last video because this is part two two things I wish I knew before I started dental nursing. If you haven't seen the first video, go watch that because like I said, this is a part two to that video. Just a disclaimer again, that these aren't things that should put you off dental nursing. They're just things that I wish I was prepared for and hopefully they will help you guys be a little bit more prepared too. If you have any questions about them, just pop them in the comment box below and I'll make sure to try and answer them as best as I can. Anyway, if you would like to hear the things that I wish I knew before I started dental nursing then just keep watching okay so the first one is repeating yourself all day every day now I kind of touched on this a little bit in the last video when I was talking about the clinny pads and how I was having to keep repeating touch sign in the bottom left hand corner and patient didn't listen so this is kind of very similar to that but you need to be prepared to say the same thing all day every day hi do you have an appointment okay just need a very quick medical update if that's okay here you go, so if you just go through this, anything that applies to you, give it a tick. If not, just leave it blank. Once you're ready, just pop it back up. If you need any help, just call me over. That's basically what you have to say all day, every day. Sometimes you just forget how to speak. You slur your words because you're not really sure how to communicate anymore. So yeah, be prepared to repeat yourself all day, every day. Anyway, should we move on to number two? This is for when you're actually in surgery. I wish I knew how strong the tongue was. Now the tongue is one of those things that you don't even feel in your mouth until you start thinking about it. It's like breathing. You don't think about breathing until you think about breathing. I just I forgot how to breathe. And now I'm having to like do it on purpose rather than just do it. So the tongue, one of the strongest muscles in the body, and I'm telling you now, if you don't already know this, when you try and retract the tongue with the suction, sometimes you're putting all of your body weight onto that suction to try and retract the tongue. What's even worse is that when you're putting so much force onto trying to retract the tongue, and then they suddenly relax it, you'll do that and you'll jump and you don't mean to but obviously it could hurt them if it goes into their cheek all you're trying to do is help the dentist out by giving them you know a clear view of everything so that's definitely something i wish i knew how strong it actually was that's enough about the tongue i'm going to move on now to number three now this i think is a very important thing i definitely wish i was more prepared for it and this is how little time you have in between appointments i've explained this in a few videos before the way that a dental appointment works is that you've got no space between the end of one appointment and the beginning of somebody else's appointment. If someone is due to come in for a checkup at 10 to 10, that checkup is 10 minutes, so it's gonna finish at 10 o'clock. Then a patient is due in at 10 o'clock. So you actually have no time whatsoever between those appointments. Sometimes you have to rush, you still have to do everything properly. Obviously you can't just leave a surgery half cleaned, but you have to learn how to do it quite quickly. You don't get the time between appointments. If you've already done the notes for the dentist, dentist is ready to go and get the next one in. Meanwhile, you're trying to clear down from a root canal. It's gonna take like at least five minutes and you've got everything everywhere. So I wish I knew how little time you actually have between appointments. To kind of go along with this, you're not enough time in an appointment either. You're kind of constantly clock watching. You're very, very lucky if you never run late. You're guaranteed to at some point in your nursing career run late late probably every day you know emergencies you have to take into account as well sometimes you get five minutes for an emergency appointment and that's just not enough for somebody to come in tell you the problem you to assess that problem potentially have to do some work on it it's definitely not enough anyway let's move on now to number four now this one is when you very first start training and it's limited shadowing opportunity so what i mean by this is that when you are hired to be a trainee dental nurse you are either going to be replacing somebody that's left or there's a job that's opened up for you somewhere your role in the dental practice will be solely for you so shadowing can be very limited because there aren't enough staff 
to be able to have two nurses in a room, unless you know another dentist is on holiday or something, you don't always get great shadowing opportunity. So it can be quite difficult to pick things up in the beginning. The practice that I'm in now, I didn't do my training in. I was in a previous practice before. I was quite lucky with my training in the way that I was able to shadow, but I was also thrown into being on my own, maybe after like the first two weeks, which sounds like a lot, two weeks of being in the surgery shadowing, but, there's a lot to learn. So that's definitely something to be prepared for. Don't think you're alone in not knowing enough. A lot of people do message me and they're like, I still don't feel confident and I'm a few months in, what do I do? You need to speak up in the practice and ask. You need to say, I don't feel confident yet, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I know this is easier said than done because there's hardly any free time, but use any free time you have to learn more things, ask somebody. And when the dentist has a spare five minutes, ask him or her. That is honestly the best way to learn is by asking questions. A dentist shouldn't be frustrated with you if you don't know, especially if you've just started training. If you've shadowed somebody for a week and then you're thrown in on your own, that dentist, they won't be frustrated with you. They'll be frustrated because they need to get the work done. But sometimes it can feel like they're taking it out on you. That's definitely something which you need to be prepared for is you may have very limited shadow time. Take a notebook into the surgery when you shadow. Write everything down. Sit on the computer and learn the system. It's so much easier said than done, I know. Be prepared to not have as much shadow opportunity as you would like to have. Okay, so now moving on to the final thing I wish I knew before I was a dental nurse, and this is indemnity and registration fees. If you don't already know this, when you become a qualified dental nurse, you have to be on the register. This is a GDC register, so you have a number and everything. You have to pay for this registration. I can't remember the exact amount. It's around 150 pounds to be on the register. And not only do you have to pay to be on the register, you have to pay for indemnity insurance. Now what indemnity insurance does, it basically covers you for I think it's up to a million pounds, depending on which insurance company you go through. This basically means that if a patient was to try and sue, you would have insurance for this. Now in some cases, you can go under your dentist's insurance, but you should ideally have your own because if there's ever a dispute, so if a patient is trying to sue for something and you agree with the patient and not the dentist, you need your own insurance to cover you because that dentist's insurance isn't gonna cover you if you do not agree with that dentist. You need to have, ideally, your own indemnity insurance. Again, this is quite expensive, so that's definitely something I wish I knew. You're forking out, again, I can't remember the exact amounts, but it's gonna be around, in total, 300 pounds-ish for both registration and indemnity. In some cases, your practice will pay for your GDC registration, but this isn't always the case. You may be asked to pay for it on your own. So it's definitely something to be aware of is that you do have to pay to remain on the dental register to be a dental nurse and to have insurance. Unfortunately, with corona stuff going on, we are still having to pay our indemnity and registration fees, and it's due at the end of every July. Nobody's been able to work. To be honest, there has been nothing come out yet about reducing these fees. It might do. We're only at the beginning of May, so by the time the end of July comes, something might come out. At the minute, we're all kind of just feeling a bit like, why should we fork out that much money when we haven't physically been able to work? We don't even know if we're gonna be able to work past July anyway. We just don't know the situation. So I think a lot of people at the minute are feeling a little bit, I don't know, uneasy by the fact that we're not able to work. A lot of us aren't able to earn money, but now we have to fork out a few hundred pounds to pay for something which we can't even do. Obviously, if you're watching this in like two years time, well, let's bloody hope Corona isn't still here in two years time because I think we'll all be driven absolutely mad. So yeah, I wish I knew that registration fees and indemnity fees were a thing. I just thought that once you're a dental nurse, that was it. End of, nothing new, no CBD, no money paid. It doesn't quite work like that. It's one of those jobs that because you're on a legal register, you have to keep proving that you're eligible to be on that register. Kind of like a teacher as well, I know that teachers have to do CPD. Something that I definitely wish I knew was the fees that you have to pay in order to stay on the register. And that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much brings me 
to the end of part two of things I wish I knew before becoming a dental nurse. I really hope these things have helped you. Maybe they've taught you something. Maybe you already knew them. Let me know in the comments if you're training, if you're qualified, if you're about to start your training. I'd really love to know. I love engaging and chatting with you guys as well. I try and answer any questions that I can too. Yeah, that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Click that subscribe button down below and then click the little bell next to it and that will notify you when I next upload. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Guys.